Hello everyone, my name is Amnon and I've been working on Scylla monitoring in the last few years. I'll be talking about the big change in Scylla monitoring, which is both practical and conceptual. Now, I'm going to use data information and knowledge throughout the presentation, so let's agree on what these terms are. Data is plain facts. For example, that ever-growing count of requests since the system starts, this one, two, three billion, billion, one, etc., is a great example for a fact that is not helpful in its raw form. But if we look at the graph of the requests, we get information. Information is what we get when you add context and calculation to data. In other words, information is a meaningful data. Now, look at the request graph. We may notice that our overall traffic is continuously increasing. And we may think it's the holiday season, we should better add a machine or two. Now, this is how I define knowledge in the context of this talk. Knowledge is an actionable understanding. At the end of the day, the monitoring is here to help you understand if you need to do something and what. So again, data, bare facts information, meaningful data, knowledge, actionable, understanding of the information. And that is the general direction Silamoni takes, focus on knowledge. This is a diagram of the monitoring stack. As you can see, a lot is going on here. On the right, from the bottom upwards, we use Prometheus for metrics collection and storage and for alerting. Prometheus collects Scylla metrics from Scylla and the host metrics from the node exporter agent that runs on the Scylla server. Next, we used Loki for metrics and alerts based on logs. Loki gets the logs from our syslog. Higher up, we have the alert manager that receives alerts from Prometheus and Loki and distributes them to other systems. We use Grafana for dashboard display. Grafana gets its data from Prometheus, the alert manager, and directly from Scylla using CQL. Scylla monitoring dashboard from knowledge to information. The overview or alert uh, alternated dashboard, if you're using Alternator, is the first place and most of the time the last to look at to know what is going on with your cluster. The CQL dashboard is the place to look for CQL information and optimization suggestions. Going down the knowledge pyramid, Detail is a deep look at a node or call level. OS is for machine metrics like disk and network. Scylla Manager is for extra information about Scylla Manager operations. And the advanced dashboard. The pit of this pair of metrics is useful for field and support, but less helpful for most users. I'll focus on the first two. The overview dashboard is our first and hopefully the last stop when looking at a cluster. The upper part tells you how the cluster is doing right now. Taking a closer look, it should look like a healthy tree, green at the top with a clear trunk. Going from left to right, we have six nodes. All of them are reporting data. All of them are active part of the cluster. Scylla Manager is connected, but currently no task is running. We have some statistics about write, read, load, and timeout. On the second row, we see that there are no alerts and that the reads and writes graphs look fine. In general, I would say this cluster is resting. Now things are not as well. I know it is unreachable, so probably its machine is down. You can also see that there are alerts about it. In the alert section, and a drop in the traffic. Overall, not great if it's a cluster you manage and it's 4 a.m. in the morning. The advisor is a new concept in Scylla monitoring that will get more focus in the coming year. The idea is to take knowledge and experience we have about Scylla operating and let you use it directly. The advisor section has two parts. The left is a list of warnings about potential problems found. For example, non-prepared statements. Non-prepared statements are bad. They are bad for performance and sometimes even a security risk. They should be avoided. Here the advisor tells you, hey, 
you have unprepared statement, you probably want to change that in your application. Another example are large cells. In most cases, having a, a cell with a huge amount of data is a mistake in your data model. Cell are reported to the logs, but now the advisor would show it as a warning. By the way, an example for using Loki in the monitoring stack. One more thing about this section, the advisor uses low priority alerts that by default only show in dashboard. But nothing stops you from sending it as an email or Slack message as well. If you want to, but you can change that configuration in the alert manager. On the right side, there's the balance section. The idea is that normally all nodes and shards should act the same. And this section tells you if it's not. Example, if the number of connections per shard is not balanced, maybe there aren't enough connections. Or if the CQL traffic is not balanced, maybe your client does not use a shadowware driver. Now, you may ask, why not show it as a warning on the left side? Well, we do, but it's also useful to see that it's green when all is okay. Now the DC section, this part repeats itself for each DC. Top row, left to right, average load on, on the DC. Now, high load could be fine. Scylla would try to use idle time for things like compaction, but when other metrics are high, you would know your system is reaching its limits. Next, we have disk usage followed by write and read information. It's the dashed lines in the reads and writes. Those are relative historical data. What was it like a day ago and a week ago? Relative information answers the question, is this normal? We expect the system to behave like it did a week ago and similar to a day ago at the same time. The extra lines are here as a reference to tell you if, if it's so or not. On the bottom row, we have the per DC node table with quick links to useful dashboard, followed by information about running compaction, cache hits versus miss, reads and writes timeout. The node table also contains the node status. For example, this is how it looks like when a node has left the cluster using node to drain command. Thing I'm going to talk about are a few sections in the CQL dashboard. The per CQL command section is clear. Remember, you can switch to shard view to look for an outlier shard. The connection table reasons show Scylla's internal client table. That could be useful when looking why not all shards have the same number of connections. Large cells large rows and large partition could be a problem, especially if it's just one or few. And it is usually a problem with the data model. Scylla keep track of those big entities, and here you can see that information, including table, partition key, etc., if it's applicable. The SQL optimization part is not new and was a harbinger of the advisor approach. All those gauges indicate potential problems. For example, on the upper left corner, we see the percentage of queries that are not prepared. Unprepared statement should be avoided, and if it starts going up, you should check your application and modify it accordingly. To wrap it all up, Scylla's monitoring advisor approach focuses on actionable knowledge. In the upcoming release, we will see more of it with more knowledge rather than information. And last, Scylla monitoring is great. It's open source. If you're not using it yet, you should. Thank you everyone for participating.